This is the Mercury AM120S from Inwin, which is a slim ARGB fan with a unique blade design, at least for a system fan. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. Now as always, to have full disclosure, Inwin did send me over this fan to test and review, but as always, all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. So if you do end up liking the video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you really end up liking this video. Let's start off with a quick overview of the fan. So this is a slim fan or slimmer fan with a 20 millimeter depth. It has a max rated RPM of 2000, a minimum rated RPM of 400. It has nine blades, but all those blades are connected kind of like a GPU cooler fan. The bearing is a long lifespan sleeve bearing. It is a PWM fan with a Y splitter. So you can actually daisy chain them. And the ARGB connector is the three pin 5 volt 50 50 connector, again with the splitter or the Y, so you can actually daisy chain these. Now you can buy these fans in a three pack for 40 USD, or you can buy them as a single fan as well. Now both the single and the three pack do come with cable extensions, so that's both a PWM cable and a ARGB 50 50 connector cable. Before getting on to the results of my testing, I want to be very clear that this testing is based off of a sample size of one. So this isn't necessarily the exact performance you'll get with these fans, but it should be relatively close. Starting with the PWM range testing, at 100% PWM, this fan had an RPM of 2150-ish. Then at zero RPM, this fan had an RPM of 475-ish. And that's it for the PWM range testing. Let's take a look at what the ARGB LEDs look like. The colors look good and the brightness seems to be adequate for a medium lit room. Other than that, I'm really not sure what else to say about the LEDs. There are some other things I wanted to go over. First is, is how short the cables are and that they are meant to be daisy chained together. And when design them like this to cut down on cable clutter. And since I hate cables so much, I do really like this concept. Now, if the cable isn't long enough to actually reach your motherboard, Inwin does provide the cable extension so that you can just have that one long cable opposed to three or four long cables. Now, something I actually really like about this fan is that Inwin went with the standard three pin 50-50 connector, but they went with a modified version and that they call lock and go. So you get the compatibility of the 50-50 connector, but then they actually clip together, which works really well. And I guess that's all the stuff I wanted to go over before getting into the standardized testing. But before we get into the standardized testing, if you are appreciating all the testing that I've done here, can you please support the channel by using my Amazon Associates links in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location. And then when you add an item or items to your cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. Plus, if you have any questions on how I test the fans, please watch my fan testing methodology video. There'll be a card along the top, and I will also have it linked in the description. But please note I have updated the cooler that I use for the CPU cooling performance to the Frost Commander 140. This way I can actually test 140 and 120 millimeter fans on the same cooling. Okay, starting with the DBA and RPM. At 4 volts, the AM120S had a DBA of 32.1 and an RPM of 800. At 6 volts, the sound level went up to 32.3 dBA with an RPM of 1195. At 8 volts, the dBA went up to 33.5 with an RPM of 1545. At 10 volts, the sound level went up to 36.1 and had an RPM of 1860. Finally, at 12 volts, the dBA was at 39.4 and that had an RPM of 2130. Okay, now for the sound recordings at each of these voltages, but first the ambient room noise for your reference.
Now for the airflow chart, I left the DBA numbers up on the chart for your reference. At four volts with no obstructions, it had an FPM of 78. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 65. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of zero. Now jumping up to 12 volts to save some time. With no obstructions, it had an FPM of 420. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 370. And with the cover panel, it had an FPM of 115. That's it for the airflow. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. At 4 volts, the average steady state CPU temperature was 84.2 C. At 6 volts, it was 78.4 C. At 8 volts, it was 75.6 C. At 10 volts, it was 74 C. And at 12 volts, it was 73.4 C. Okay, I'll be comparing the Inwin AM120S to the Deepcool CF120. The Thermalrite C12015BS PWM and the Thermalrate C12CWS PWM. So when it comes to sound levels, all these fans are pretty similar, but the CF120 has just a slightly lower DBA at 10 and 12 volts. Moving on to airflow. So with no obstructions, the CF120, the AM120S, and the C12015 at 8, 10, and 12 volts had very similar FPMs. In the mesh panel testing, things don't really change too much. The airflow of those three fans is still very similar. In the covered panel testing, things do change quite a bit. The AM120S and the C12015 do manage to maintain more airflow than the CF120 does. For the CPU cooling performance, the AM120S, the C12015, and the C12C all do pretty well at 6 volts and up. And that brings us to the 34 dBA noise equalized testing. So having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA or 12 volts if they don't make it to 34 dBA. So with no obstructions, the Inwin AM120S performs okay-ish with an FPM of 295. With the mesh panel, it again performs okay-ish with an FPM of 260. With the covered panel, it performed not well, but not many fans do with an FPM of only 62. So what do I think of Inwin's AM120S? Its performance is very similar to other ARGB fans I've tested, which isn't great, but it's also not bad. It is kind of just that status quo thing. But just as long as you have these fans behind a mesh panel, they'll do just fine. Now for anyone who's actually built a gaming PC or a PC with ARGB fans, you know how bad the cable clutter can actually get when you have five or six fans with two cables and yada yada and yada yada. So I really do like the concept of the daisy chain short cables together so you can actually have maybe two or three sets of fans and then with much less cable clutter. Now if the cable isn't long enough to actually reach your motherboard, Inwin does provide the cable extensions so that you can just have that one long cable opposed to three or four long cables. So it's again, just cutting down on that cable clutter. And to me, that is the major appeal of these fans. It, it, I understand it's something really small, but again, if you have built ARGB systems or systems with ARGB fans in them, like dealing with something like this is much easier than dealing with a standard or typical ARGB fan. Now I do understand that the blade design of this fan is extremely unique and some of you may really like it, but there will be some people that just won't be able to get over that. And I guess that's something that you need to decide. But again, just as long as you have these behind a mesh panel, they'll be adequate, they'll work for you. You shouldn't have, you, you shouldn't have any airflow issues. It's really just comes down to like how much do you hate cables and are you okay with the blade design look? And I guess that is all that I have for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and then you get to view all of my charts. 
a link is in the description. There is also Patreon if you would like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. Uh, you may want to check out this video here. I don't really know what I'll be putting up there, but I'm pretty sure it'll be something along the same lines as this video now. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.